So why are the constructible numbers exactly those numbers that are degree 2 to the j, their degree over the rational numbers, is a power of 2? Here's a sketch of a proof by induction. And the induction is going to be induction on the k sub i's, the levels of constructibility that we looked at before, with the base case being k sub 0, the rational numbers themselves. Why are the rational numbers constructible? Why do they fit this description? Well, any rational number is going to be a root of the polynomial p of t equals t minus that rational number. If x is rational, then it's a root of p of t equals t minus x. And that is a polynomial with rational coefficients that has degree equal to 1. So in the base case, because 1 is a power of 2, uh, we see that, indeed, those rational numbers fit this bill of constructibility. Also, t minus x, as a polynomial of degree 1, is irreducible, because, after all, every polynomial of degree 1 must be irreducible, as long as its leading coefficient is an irreducible uh, number inside of the field. And so in, in this example, um, the only way to factor out something from t minus x is to factor out a single rational number, a rational constant. And as long as that's not 0, it's a unit inside of the rational numbers, and therefore that factorization is a trivial factorization. So that's a lot of words to say something relatively trivial. The base case is more or less uh, done. So it's the inductive step that's a little more interesting. Let's suppose for the moment that this works for k sub i. In other words, that all elements of k sub i are constructible according to the hypotheses of this theorem. What we then want to show is that that also holds that the elements of k i plus 1 also fit this bill of constructibility according to the theorem. So if k i's are all constructible, so they satisfy these polynomial hypotheses, why then do the k i plus 1's? So let's pick up uh, an element of ki plus 1. Because ki is a subset of ki plus 1, uh, we have to sort of proceed in two cases. If our element that we picked belongs to ki already, um, then we already know by assumption that it satisfies the hypotheses of our theorem, because that was our inductive hypothesis. So if x belongs to k sub i, then it's the root of some irreducible polynomial of degree 2 to the j over the rationals. So then we're done at that point. So it's really the only interesting case is if x doesn't belong to uh, k sub i, if it belongs to k i plus 1 but not to k i. Then by our assumption, x is a quadratic number over k sub i. In other words, it satisfies, it is a root of a quadratic polynomial whose coefficients are in k i. In other words, there's a quadratic polynomial with coefficients in k i of which x is a root. So we'll call that q. Now let's take a look at what we have here. If we, We've got one big, huge step from the rational numbers all the way up to ki, and by assumption, that step has degree 2 to the j. And then we have one more step going from ki to ki plus 1. That's a step of degree 2. And if our number x belongs to ki plus 1 but not ki, that means we should be able to write it as u plus v, where u belongs to ki, but v does not. According to our conjugate roots theorem, then whatever polynomial this is that connects ki to ki plus 1 must also have u minus v as one of our roots. Now, we also know that ki, because its degree over q is 2 to the j, we can write all the elements in ki as a linear combination, rational combination, really, of 1 and then 2 to the j minus 1 uh, different other elements. And so there's 2 to the j different terms that we are going to need in order to write any element of k sub i uniquely. Then what about our step up to ki plus 1? What are we gaining? What we're gaining is exactly the new element v. And so in order to write elements of ki plus 1, we need to be able to allow, first of all, in green for all the elements that were in ki to begin with, of which there are 2 to the j possible terms. But then we also need to allow for another set of 2 to the j terms that in addition to having the, the u's, u1, u2, up to uh, u to the 2 to the j minus 1, uh, that were in ki, we also need to be able to multiply each of those by our new element v. And so we get double the number of terms that we used to have before. So the total number of terms that we're going to need to express an element in ki plus 1 is twice 2 to the j, which is 2 to the j plus 1. And therefore, what we would say as algebraists is that the degree of ki plus 1 over the rational field is equal to 2 to the power j plus 1, which implies that there is a polynomial of degree 2 to the j plus 1 of which the elements in ki plus 1 are all roots, which is what we were trying to prove. So by induction, we see that the constructible number theorem holds some water. So let's return to this question that was our ancient Greek tragedy. Why can we not double the volume of a cube? We could do it for a square, the area of a square, but we can't do it for the volume of a cube with a compass and a straight edge. Why not? 
Well, if we assume that s is the side length of our original cube, then whatever we scale that up by, a times s, so a is our scale factor here, that that number a has to satisfy a cubed is equal to 2. So that when we multiply it by itself three times, a s times a s times a s is going to be 2s cubed, which is equal to 2 times v. But that must mean that a is a root of the polynomial t cubed minus 2 is equal to 0. And here's the rub. If a were a constructible number, then according to the constructible number theorem, any irreducible polynomial that q satisfies must have a degree which is a power of 2. Okay? Otherwise, we'd be in violation of the theorem that we just proved. But here is an example of a polynomial of which a is a root, t cubed minus 2. But is it irreducible? There's the question. Is there a way that we can factor t cubed minus 2 over the rational field? If it were possible to factor it non-trivially over the rational field, then because p is a cubic, one of those factors is going to have to be degree 1, and the other is going to have to be degree 2. The only other possibility is that one or the other of the factors has degree 0, and therefore it's not a uh, non-trivial factorization. But on the other hand, a polynomial of degree 1 is just going to be a linear factor like t minus x. And if this factored over the rational field, then that x is going to have to be a rational number. So the question about the reducibility of a cubic comes down to whether or not that cubic has a rational root. And so the rational root theorem we can actually use to justify why t cubed minus 2 is not, in fact, uh, reducible. According to the rational roots theorem, the only possible rational roots are a factor of the constant term, negative 2, divided by a factor of the leading coefficient, 1. And so only plus minus 1 and plus minus 2 are the possible rational roots of t cubed minus 2. And we can check directly that none of them work. Therefore, a cubed minus 2, sorry, t cubed minus 2 is an irreducible polynomial. p cannot factor because then it would have a rational root. And because this polynomial is irreducible and its degree is not a power of 2, we conclude that a is not a constructible number. So according to the tenets of field theory and constructibility, we cannot, in fact, double the volume of a cube using just a compass and just a straight edge. And that's something we can prove with algebra that would have been very challenging to prove using just standard geometry.